Okay, maybe not anyone. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about my top five horror movies anyone can watch. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. Well, it's the first Saturday of the month, so that means it's time for another episode of The Movie Nerds Club. Since October is prime spooky season, we've once again decided to turn our sights to horror movies. After you watch my top picks for horror movies anyone can watch, make sure you check out the videos of the other members of the Movie Nerds Club. Links to their videos are in the description below. October means horror movies, so we've once again decided to go with a horror theme for the month. Last October, we talked about our top horror movies of the 2010s, but we're broadening things up a bit this year. In fact, even our interpretation of this month's theme is going to be a bit broad, with each movie nerd taking different things into consideration. The theme was originally horror movies for wimps, but then it became horror movies for newbies, then kid horror movies, then family-friendly horror movies. We all had different ideas and so we decided to kind of just create this blanket term that could encompass all of these ideas. So for me, the topic of horror movies that anyone can watch includes what I would consider kind of mainstream gateway horror. So movies that horror fans already know and love, but ones that horror newcomers might be able to ease in with. They've all got their thrills and chills, but I wouldn't consider any of these overly scary, and none of them are gory either. Remember, these are just my top movies, not the top movies, so be sure to post your own personal top horror movies anyone can watch in the comments below. I've already reviewed some of these movies on this channel, so if you want to check those out for some more in-depth thoughts on each of them, I'll put links in the description below and also link them up in the cards as we go along. Alright, let's get this top list started. Coming in at number 5, Poltergeist. I've always considered Poltergeist to be a bit of an odd movie. Not because of any of its plot elements, but because of its tone. It's always had this sort of kid-friendly, supernatural horror vibe to it, which makes it perfect for this list. It isn't actually a kid's movie, and definitely has some intense horror moments, but something about the Spielbergian polish always provided some levity to the film for me, even as a kid. It's interesting, because the introduction of the supernatural force is treated with lighthearted amusement by both the characters and the filmmakers, which only makes the malevolent turn even more jarring and unsettling. Now, I wouldn't say Poltergeist is a particularly scary film, but it certainly has creepy aspects to it. Even though the ghostly parts of the story aren't excessively chill-inducing, the idea of an angry poltergeist is pretty terrifying. More than visual fear, this film generates emotional fear. The anxiety that a presence could be in your own home. That the sudden breeze you felt in your house wasn't just a draft. That the creaking you heard upstairs wasn't just the house settling. Or that the book falling off your shelf wasn't just because you didn't put it back right. That the phenomena in the movie could really happen to you. And it's that anxiety that makes Poltergeist such an effective movie, and a great one for anybody looking to get into horror. Coming in at number four, A Quiet Place. This is a film that's built around a very simple premise. If you make a sound, you die. It might initially sound, no pun intended, a little gimmicky, but this film really transcends its premise to become a wholly effective horror movie. You don't really see a whole lot of the threat in this movie, which makes it mild enough for just about anybody to watch, but this is still a thrilling film. Again, not one I would consider traditionally scary, but the tension here is through the roof. There's a lot of mystery to begin with, because the movie takes its time to tell us what happened and introduce the rules of this world. And not only do we get the thrills from the central thread of the film, but this movie does a great job of making you care about the family at the center of the story. So there's this additional tension and anxiety, because you don't want anything to happen to them. The premise and characters are a huge part of what makes this movie so good, but this film would be nothing without its sound design. With a title like A Quiet Place, you'd probably guess that this is a fairly quiet film, and you'd be right. Again, the characters need to stay quiet or else they're gonna die. And so there's very little dialogue, and instead you hear a lot of sounds from the environment that you wouldn't necessarily focus on in any other movie. The wind blowing, the sound of walking on sand, the deafening crunch of stepping on a dead leaf. The smallest of sounds have you sitting on the edge of your seat holding your breath. 
So when they're contrasted by the few sudden instances of very loud noises, it's scary and thrilling. But on the flip side, some of the scariest moments in this movie are when it's completely silent. Coming in at number three, Halloween. I imagine this one's gonna make it onto just about everybody's list this month, but for good reason. This is pretty much the ultimate gateway horror film. Hugely popular, hugely influential. It might not have been the first slasher, but it's the one that really popularized the subgenre. It also kicked off one of the biggest franchises in horror history, which I just so happen to be reviewing this month for my annual 13 Nights of Halloween. So be sure to check out the playlist here for Halloween reviews coming out every few days all month long. The sequels are a little diverse and certainly of varying quality, but none come close to this first movie. So it's no surprise that this is as highly regarded as it is. As with pretty much all of the movies on this list, I don't think Halloween is a particularly scary film, but it is an incredibly tense and suspenseful one. It takes its time to set up an ominous and foreboding atmosphere. So when things finally do start to get more action intensive during the third act, you're already on edge. And so the simplest things pack a huge punch. In fact, simplicity is one of the best things about this film. It takes place over a single day and the plot's surprisingly straightforward. The movie never concerns itself with trying to explain what's going on or why it's happening. It just focuses on its characters. Michael Myers as the seemingly unstoppable evil force and Laurie Strode just trying to survive the night. When we think of slashers nowadays, our minds tend to travel to the bloodier, gorier films that really got their start in the 80s, but Halloween isn't like that. It's very tame by that particular standard. So I think it's a good movie for this anyone can watch list. Coming in at number two, It Chapter One. Okay, probably not much of a surprise for this one either. You guys know I'm a big Stephen King fan and a big fan of this movie. Much like Poltergeist earlier on in this list, this movie has a younger leaning vibe to it, even though it's definitely not a kid's movie. But again, the tone's there. It has that 80s Amblin feel to it, like E.T. or The Goonies, or even other kid adventure stories like Stand By Me. Of course, a big part of that comes from the focus of this film and the group of kids at its center. Chapter two splits its focus between the kid and adult versions of the Losers Club, but chapter one solely focuses on the kids. And as a result, it has a slightly more entertaining and fun feel to it. This is one of those horror movies that I would say is kind of broadly enjoyable, not just because of its scares and horror moments, but because it's a fun movie. The kids act like kids, so we experience the movie in the way that they experience the situations. It's frequently comedic, but it's also got this adventurous tone as the kids not only go out and explore dairy on their own, but find themselves wrapped up in this supernatural horror mystery. Again, I don't think it's a super scary movie, largely due to its tonal balance, but it definitely has some creepy imagery and moments of horror. But it's this exciting, sort of fun scary horror. Pennywise is one of Stephen King's most iconic characters, and he certainly delivers here in this movie as a very unsettling presence. So that means my number one horror movie anyone can watch is Psycho. Of the films on this list, this is probably the least horror, being much more of a thriller than anything else, but I'd still argue it's one of those gateway movies. I know it certainly was for me. This was the first non-kid-aimed scary movie that I can remember seeing, and I was young, but I loved this movie, and obviously I still do. It's the movie that I credit getting me into horror, and it was also my first Hitchcock movie. He's one of my favorite directors, so this movie had a big hand in shaping my eventual cinematic preferences. As with the rest of the movies on this list, I think this film is more thrilling than it is outright scary. There's a lot of tension, and we're made to be suspicious of certain characters, even though our attention might actually be better focused on other characters. And so it's kind of got this mystery aspect as we're trying to feel out who these people are. And even after some big moments in the film, there are still a lot of pieces that need to come together before we get a sense of the full picture. And in the meantime, it's suspenseful. The lighting, the black and white cinematography, the unique filming angles, even the iconic score all help to create this incredibly tense and suspenseful atmosphere. So by the time the third act action and revelations come around, you're really on edge. 
So it's intense without being too horror intense, making it an ideal movie for pretty much anybody. All right, so there you have it, my top five horror movies anyone can watch. What are your top movies? Be sure to post your own ranking in the comments below, and don't forget to check out the pics of the other members of the Movie Nerds Club. Remember, I've already reviewed some of these movies, so you can check those videos out for some more in-depth discussion of each, as well as my ratings, pros and cons, and even tailored film recommendations. Also, if you're interested in buying any of these movies, I do have affiliate links to all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insider information out of this top list, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe here at it to see more videos like this, as well as movie reviews. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.